YouTube channel. So, I was thinking since fall has finally officially begun and it is like a really nice 67, 68 degree weather day, I thought it would be nice to head out to the store and pick up some yarn from either Michael's or Joann's or any other stores that have it quite cheap, just a couple bundles of it to potentially do some crocheting today. And then I wanna head over to Five and Below because I have a tripod that I use when I film at home, but I kinda want one that's a little smaller that I can do um, handheld when I'm in public. And so I wanna pick that up. And so for the rest of the video, I really wanna do just some cozy hobbies. I think that is, the quintessential thing that you have to do when it's fall is do your cozy hobbies. Light your candle, turn on Gilmore Girls, do some fun pumpkin spiced baking, um, crochet or coloring, reading, all of those things. And I kind of just want to take you guys along with me to do that. And so, yeah, I'm going to get ready to make myself a little fall drink here at home and then we can jump in the car and go shopping. So we have made it to the car. I decided I want to get Starbucks. <laughs> instead of making it at home. So we're gonna head there um, and get something with some pumpkin cold foam on it. Oh no, the camera's kind of sliding around. But yeah, get something with some pumpkin cold foam on it because this is my first year ever trying pumpkin cold foam. And I don't know what stopped me from it before. I think it was more like, I loved fall. Obviously I love everything about it, but I think it felt like it was a hype, like this hype train that like, I didn't want, really want to like jump onto or whatever. And then maybe like a few weeks ago when it came out, I was like, I'm gonna get me my favorite drink, but I'm gonna put a little puppy go foam on top. And my life was forever changed, <laughs> okay? And so basically I could drink a whole cup of it. I could use it as body wash. Pumpkin cold foam is literally life. It's just so, so good. It reminds me of that little um, meme of the little boy saying, Oh my god, I love Chipotle! Chipotle is my life! And then, there's this viral purse, the book purse, apparently going on on TikTok. I don't have TikTok, but I saw it watching a YouTuber that I follow. And she purchased the purse, and it's like really popular. It's the coach. Terry hobo bag. I will put a picture up. You guys, I need it. I am not a bag person at all. Like my sisters and my mom can contest that. I'm not a bag person. I'm not a shoe person. I'm not really um, somebody who will go to the store and like get a pair of shoes. I'm not into tennis shoes. Like I'll get a pair of Brooks for running. And like one day I want to get a pair of Hoka's for running, but like that's it. I'm not someone who needs name brand in terms of purse and shoes, really clothes in general. I'm like Old Navy, Target, Amazon, TJ Maxx, like that's the extent of the clothes that I purchase for myself, as well as like where I get my shoes, DSW. I'm not really into all of that. On Amazon, I saw a little dupe, but I don't think it comes with the crossbody strap, which that bag does. It just comes with the shoulder strap, which is fine. Um, but I do find that I'm someone who always does crossbody. I never just wear a bag on my shoulder unless I'm doing a tote bag. The reason why that Terry um, hobo bag seems so nice is because she literally was fitting the most massive size of books that are even hardcovers, as well as like her wallet, her cell phone, and other little random odds and ends. I think that's just like ideal. I do for the most part, I didn't bring it now, but I bring my Kindle with me almost everywhere, but I have a fanny pack, so I just hold it. I don't have anywhere to put it. And so when I saw that bag, it was like, now I have a way to like bring my Kindle and have it in a safe place in a purse with my wallet and all my stuff. And then I can go out and do book shopping and buy a book and shove it in there. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna peruse today take you along with me see what I can find if not I'll order that one on Amazon and when it comes in we'll you know do a little review
we have our drinky drink. All right, let's see. Ooh, let's go. Wow. This is really tasty. The lighting's kind of funny. Let me see. I can't help the lighting. It's cloudy today, but this is really good. But yeah, I have made it to five and below. And so let's head in to look for the tripod, see what other like fall goodies and stuff they have. And then there's a TJ Maxx also in this parking lot. There's also a Dollar Tree, which sometimes will have very cheap yarn. So it's a potential to look in there. And then if not down the street is the Joann's and the Michaels. So let's go dive in. Alright, so we have left TJ Maxx. Can we find it? There we go. So I did turn on the air conditioning because it's 75 degrees. Yes, this morning has been cool, but like the afternoons get up into the 70s. So it's not like the ideal fall weather, but I'm not going to complain. Um, but yes, I cannot believe we went into TJ Maxx and left out with this beauty. Are you kidding me? Do you see her? She's a little like geometric, I guess, in a way with taller on the other side, shorter on the other side. Has a little silver thing, completely plain. Decently big. Like, you got a good amount of space in there. You have a zipper pocket, a little side pocket, and then the rest is open. And so, we'll obviously add our keys in there now and our wallet and our lip gloss. And these are the nails I got, the Nail Reformation, which I've gotten this brand before, the best quality, thickest nails ever, but they are pricey for press-ons, I feel, although cheaper than getting your nails done. Um, but they are the Nail Reformation, they are $9.99, and they're French chip with pearls. They're a little long, and so we'll see when I get them on. Usually I don't go this long, but they look super cute. soft really nice and so I think we'll just start working on a blanket super easy so yeah as you can see on here the pattern is like this checkered pattern it's super cute and so I'm thinking I won't do the checkered because I only bought one of these but 
if I do, I could just make some squares and end up connecting them. So we'll see what my plan is. I'm thinking I'm just going to go straight across with it. And as I use it up, I'll just get another color that I really like and add that on. Then another color that I like and then add that on and just do it until it gets to a length that I like. Um, and so that is the plan. But I'm going to head home now. Take you with me. And I need some lip gloss. Take you with me. And, um go home and bake some pumpkin muffins. Alrighty, so I am gonna make some pumpkin spiced muffins, or at least that was my original thought. I ended up deciding to do a loaf pan, which you will see there in the corner, but I just have this pumpkin mix that I really love. It's gluten-free, so my family eats a lot of it because one of my sisters is gluten-free. And then it's almond flour, so it's a little bit better in terms of like lower carb, less sugar. And so we love it. But I always jack up any almond flour box recipe with adding additional almond flour or coconut flour or whatever other substitute, let's say gluten-free flour, just because I find that the box um, doesn't really have enough and so I added some extra almond flour, cinnamon, vanilla, oil, which was olive oil, um, eggs, pumpkin spice, baking powder, whenever you make anything almond flour. I highly, 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 highly recommend baking powder. It will change everything. Then a little bit of water and I whisked it up. And as you can see, I'm watching Gilmore Girls. This is my first year watching it. Um, I I think in the past when I was younger, I watched a few episodes, but this is like the first official year and it's really cozy and I can definitely get behind all the hype. But as you can see, I'm putting it into the little loaf tin now and I ended up adding some walnuts on it, but I never really got footage of me adding them onto it. And then we're gonna pop it into my little air fryer toaster oven, which is literally a godsend. I love this thing. I don't always have to turn on the oven. It bakes, cooks, air fries. It's just amazing. It even broils, toasts. But yeah, we're gonna pop it in and set a timer for 30 minutes and check it when it gets out. but I put it in the loaf tin, it's nearly done. So I cannot wait to take it out and I put some more just in the middle of getting that clip there. The timer went off for 30 minutes, so it stopped the clip. But I, yeah, have the loaf. I'm gonna go check it now. I think it should be done. And then we're gonna make the homemade cream cheese icing. And I think I'm gonna add like some pumpkin spice, vanilla, cinnamon, um, maybe even a little fresh pumpkin um, or canned pumpkin <laughs> rather, just to give it a little bit more of a pumpkin flavor. But I have been sitting here and coloring. And like I said, these are the books that I, let me grab it, that I got off Amazon. I have two of them that I ordered. This is the Creative Haven and they're really nice. This one here says, wish you were here. And it just has a lot of destinations. I'm working on a picture on here too, if you can see it. It's really, really nice. It's like this guy, you know, canoeing and then 
the beautiful like town in the background. I'm really loving that. And then the one that I was working on today is the Autumn Harvest, as you saw, really nice. These are really affordable too. There's 60 different coloring pages, I believe. They're one-sided and it was like four bucks. The other one's maybe five something. So a really great deal. But yeah, I didn't do too much in the way of coloring it because it's super detailed, but I did continue in and I kind of feel like that's the beauty of the cozy hobbies that you do throughout the fall and the winter, those colder months is that you don't have to race through it like you do during the summer months where it feels like you're just jumping to the next activity really fast and like, let me get this color so I can do another one, but I can take my time and enjoy it. So if it takes me a couple days to color something, then it takes me a couple days to color something and just really enjoy what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure this this new little tripod that I'm using is very different, but I am loving it. And as you can see, we got a little bit done. Not sure if it's really focusing for you, but it's super cute. It'll be nice when I completely finish it. And then what are some other ones in here um, that are kind of fun? This one is of a cute little kitty. He is just living his best life, grabbing something off the tree. And I think that one would be really cute to do next. But yes, I'm gonna go grab the pumpkin bread out of the little toaster oven and let it cool. We can whip up the cream cheese icing. And then I kind of wanna sit down and either do a little bit more reading or kind of start this little crochet project that I have. I have a whole bunch of needles. I need to see which one would, or hooks. I need to see which one is the correct size for that type of yarn. I think I should have it. And then I might do a little bit more reading because as you saw, I am reading Divine Rivals. I have the audiobook version. I have a physical copy and I have the Kindle Unlimited copy. So three of them. I am currently at page 80 with my Kindle, which is chapter 11 in general. Um, I started listening to it through Audible and I really liked it. It has that enemies to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes in general in terms of romance. I don't know why, but I just really love it. Or like the grumpy sunshine, that's like my favorite. And so I really enjoy it. I do love kind of... I guess you could see the world building or where I feel like it's leading because I feel like there's a lot of practical, your average everyday, you know, talk, but then there's also things that make it seem fantasy too, you know, so I really do love it. Um, I'm currently at the part where Iris is having a little bit of a hard time because she got some really bad news. And so she's in the house, she's cried, she's just in there and someone is knocking on her door. And that is where I left off page 80 and I'm loving it. So either I'm gonna continue reading this or I'm just going to kind of dive in and do a little crocheting and maybe listen to the audiobook version. But yeah, that is gonna be what we do. So let's dive into the kitchen and make some homemade pumpkin cream cheese icing. Alrighty, so I thought a little voiceover would be fun. I am making some homemade cream cheese icing. I will make my homemade icing any day, no matter what the recipe is, than buying the stuff in the little jar from Pillsbury. I personally think it tastes gross. And so cream cheese is always gonna be my go-to. I love cheesecake. I love cream cheese icing. It's just like my favorite. So here I'm basically taking just like maybe a half to like a third of a block of cream cheese, pumpkin spice, cinnamon, and vanilla, and then I'm gonna microwave it for like 20 seconds. I'm slowly softening it, as you're gonna see. And then I'm gonna get some canned pumpkin that I've had um, that I've been making pumpkin cold foam with and I'm going to make some of that in there too to give it more of a pumpkin flavor then I'm going to add some sweetness to it so put a little sweetener to sweeten it up and whip it also I love cream cheese as the base for like a cream cheese icing because you can flavor it with so many things lemon extract almond extract you can just make a cinnamon kind an apple one with some applesauce you can make caramel with adding some caramel sauce you can do chocolate you can do strawberry jam you could add some protein powder into this and make it like a protein type of icing whether that be you know cinnamon or like cheesecake or um brownie or a cookie dough like there's so many things that you can do with um this type of base for your icings and then as you can see i'm using my really nice hobby lobby throther to whip this up but it's way too thick <laughs> this is used for coffee and like cold foams but i decided to just use this because i didn't want to get out my big mixer but in the end it worked out great and i think this icing is perfect for cakes for muffins for cupcakes for loaves it's kind of my go-to and so let me know down in the comments if you have ever made cream cheese icing and what's your favorite
is what I love about crocheting is that it's such a task that is so calming so that you can almost turn your brain off and your hands just know what to do, the mind muscle memory. And so I'm really glad that I learned this as a kid. My mom, I can thank her for teaching me. It's such an amazing thing, even if you never really make anything, but you start a bunch of stuff. I think that just the action of doing the crochet movements is so calming for your mind. And so I was listening to a really nice ambiance as well as the audiobook Little Cozy Mystery that I've been going through. And it's really nice. It's called The Cider Shop Rules. And I think it's super cozy. The pumpkin patch owner has been murdered and we're trying to figure out what happened and who did it. And it's in this really cute little cozy town. And so I highly recommend it. But let me know if you have any more cozy mysteries because I definitely want to dive into that this fall. But yeah, it's coming together and I cannot wait until this little project is finished. I took off the pumpkin kitty sweatshirt crew neck because it's getting hot. But the bread has been taken out of the oven. I'll post a little footage of it right here on the screen, but I'm letting it cool a little bit and then we're going to ice it. But as you saw, I've been working on this here. It's quite long, but it's not really going to be like a wraparound blanket. My goal is to make it kind of just like a little throw type deal, but I think I made a mistake. <laughs> Actually, I know I made a mistake. Like already on the end, I did too many stitches here, so it's like starting to curve a little bit. I just added an extra stitch, but I'm not gonna take it out. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. It's gonna be a little bit easier now. I completely forgot how many of these in total I chained in the beginning, but that's okay. And I technically needed an eight millimeter needle, but as you can see, if it'll focus super tight, this is a nine because I don't have an eight. I have a 15, a nine, and every other one, but an eight. and I thought I would have had it, that's why I didn't get one. But I'm just going to do a little bit more of this. Let me adjust this camera. Just this so you can kind of get me and maybe it'll focus on my hands a little bit just so you can get it. But basically, not that I'm good at this or that I'm trying to do any type of tutorial or anything. So I'm basically gonna loop it on. So now I have two. Then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in this bottom chain. Don't know if these are the right words. So now there's like three on there. Then I'm going to loop this on and pull it through the first one, which is that bottom chain. So there should be three left. Oh wait, I think I'm doing it wrong. Am I? No, I'm not. Okay. I forgot. Then one more. So I'll show you again. Sorry that like the filming isn't great. I think I need to get out of like the camera focus. So it just gets like my hands and not my face because it really wants to focus on my face. Okay, so we're gonna try it again. So I have my one little chain on there. I'm gonna loop it, put it into this bottom chain, then pull it through. Then I should have three. Then I'm gonna loop it through two. Do it again, loop it through the last two. So that the chain start looking like that. And this is gonna help me make it get taller a lot faster um, and make it look taller. Whereas if I was just doing the single crochets, it would, which is what I did when I originally chained it. I have a lot of this yarn left though. Oh wow, it is focusing really weird. There we go. I have a lot of this um, yarn still though and it's really soft. If you could feel it through the screen, I don't know how to describe it, but it's super buttery. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of these. several more it's coming together obviously as I complete more I'll update you more who knows maybe you'll see a little bit more of this in some vlogs in the future but I think I'm kind of ready to ice my pumpkin loaf and taste it <laughs> and then probably just go out for a walk to kind of like end off the vlog I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it 
in that it gave you some ideas of some things you can do that are kind of cozy. You can bake, you can watch your favorite cozy YouTuber or Gilmore Girls or any other movie that you really love. You can crochet or if you don't know how, find a YouTube video and just start. You can knit, you can sew, um, spend time coloring. I'll be sure to link a couple of those um, coloring books down below that I got off Amazon so that you guys can get it as well. And then these nails, as you saw, that I picked up from TJ Maxx when I got my new purse. They're really nice. And this this is such a good quality nails. Like, they're tough. I cannot describe it. They last a long time. I got them done but like you know what I mean when you get nails you just feel I don't even know but I love it but let's go and ice our pumpkin bread slice here it looks quite good it'll focus without me in it maybe it's oh look at it put a little pumpkin spice on top it smells really spicy so I'm quite happy and it's very moist I'll show you your girl knows how to bake even if it is a box bake she jacked it up and it worked in her favor Mm-hmm. I put my foot in it. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it and that you got some cozy hobby ideas or just bought you a little bit of joy maybe while you were doing some of your cozy hobbies. You watched me do mine. But I cannot wait to get this video edited and out to you guys. And if you like it, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and hit your notification bell and subscribe. And I will catch you 